Hey folks, this video is intended for individuals who are applying to PhD programs. So that's mostly going to be senior undergrads, um, but also people who have been working out in the real world who are going back to school. Some of what I'm gonna say might uh, apply to them as well. Um, and even some grad students kind of in their early years of a PhD program. So I get a lot of uh, requests for, uh, for information from my uh, students in my classes in my lab about this topic, so I think it's a good time of year to um, to go over some of the considerations, not rules, but considerations in picking a school and advisor. So uh, this has the characteristic of being one of the most important decisions you're likely to make in your life, but you have to make it at a time when you kind of have the least amount of experience to be able to make this decision uh, intelligently. So uh, what I'm hoping to do is to kind of help you de-risk the process, because I know it's an emotionally fraught time and a lot of times people uh, rush into decisions based on the enormous uh, uh, time pressure um, and also personal pressure of you know, relocating your whole life somewhere else. So um, I have kind of six things that I want to talk about, but the first two things are really like negative one and zero. So, uh, so the things that we need to consider before we consider the, uh, the, the PI and the location. So first of all, consideration negative one is, uh, should you go to grad school for a PhD in the first place? And the answer is yes, if you love research. You have to love research. And remember that you're not going to grad school because you've always been in school and are kind of afraid of the real world. Um, and I have to admit that I was kind of in that category that I just couldn't see myself outside of an academic environment. Um, I had very few jobs outside of labs and, uh, and universities, like even when I did uh, like janitorial work it was for a summer at my university, so I just loved the university environment. Remember that, uh, that you're applying to a PhD knowing that it's more work than a full-time job. Um, and this is uh, a little bit of a touchy subject because PIs aren't really allowed to tell you that, you're, that you have to work more work more than a full-time job. But remember that it's it's not really the hours; it's the amount that uh, that that a PhD consumes your mental energy. And often, uh, you know, even if you're not going back into the lab to collect time points or or you know working late into the night, it's always going to be kind of on your mind because your PhD thesis topic is really uh, quite intellectually consuming. So if it's not more hours than a full-time job, it's uh, it's it 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 feels more consuming consuming during a comparable uh, four to six year period uh, of, of working um, in kind of a, a, a nine to five job, at least at the, at least at the BS level. And for, to some extent, you can understand that because the, uh, the PhD is really a, a premium, right? It, it gives you a, uh, it gives you kind of a, uh, the, a, a salary premium going forward, and also it's the reason why you get promoted into more uh, more uh, managerial positions within R and D and directorships uh, than you would with just a BS uh, or MS. Um, know that if you're applying to become a professor and that's the only thing you want to do, keep in mind. Make sure you do that. You make that decision with the numbers in mind, that only about 5% of PhDs are actually employed as tenure track faculty members. And each time a position is posted in nat natural sciences or engineering, we get like 200 to 300 applicants uh, from all over the, the world for it. So just if you're going to apply because you wanna be a professor, just be totally honest with yourself about the numbers. So consideration zero is the research topic itself. This is not necessarily applying and necessarily making the decision about the PI or the institution, but the research topic. So the, the right topic, the bottom line is that the right topic for you is probably a balance of what you're most excited about, uh, plus the uh, something to do with the PI and something to do with the group culture. Um, the what you want to avoid is 
restricting yourself to the research topic that you did as an undergrad because that can be extremely limiting. Um, and the reason that, uh, that students or people in general don't grow intellectually is oftentimes because they keep spending their time doing what they're already they already know that they're good at doing. Um, so for an example, from my, uh, my own life, one of my hobbies is playing the piano. And I know I could be a lot better than I am if I didn't spend 99% of my time playing what I already know how to play. Um, because, you know, it's actually, it's tough to learn new things. You're hard on yourself when you don't get it right away and it takes a lot of time, but it, actually it's really, really rewarding to, uh, to not restrict yourself to your undergraduate research, which you might have actually stumbled upon by accident. Like, you know, you knocked on five doors or 10 doors and one professor opened the door and gave you a position in the lab. So don't restrict yourself in that, uh, in that sense. There are some fields where the PIs might not hire you unless you had a very specific undergraduate training. And in those circumstances, if you can't get into these labs, I think it says more about the PI and maybe the, the whole field than it says about you. Okay, now, uh, now here we're talking about, uh, uh, about the actual considerations of, of, a, of, of finding a PI and a lab. So the first consideration, consideration one, is an established lab versus, or, or established PI, or, maybe the same thing, versus an up-and-coming PI. So the big name PIs and super labs, uh, which are sometimes called um, you know, super labs if they have more than 20 or 30 grad students and postdocs, often get a lot of papers and have a lot of funding, but they have some significant disadvantages. Um, students really have to be self-motivated or else they will languish in those labs. The other consideration is something that I didn't really appreciate when I was a student and postdoc myself, but it's really come up uh, lately as, uh, as, a, as a PI since I've been in my current position, is that the potential for really deep scholarship in the super labs is um, not always that great. And when a, when a, let me give you an example. So there are some projects in my, uh, my current lab where I get a, a draft of a great idea from a student or postdoc and they have some promising results. And it, it takes me sometimes eight consecutive Saturdays uh, to go through that paper in enough detail to provide the, uh, the amount of, of, uh, of direction, of experimental design and, uh, and scholarship. Uh, to, to, to guide that student into transforming this work into something that's really uh, uh, deep scholarship and going to make an impact on that field. And when a paper of that, uh, of that depth comes out of a super lab, it is definitely not because the PI uh, of that lab spent all this extra time on the paper. It's because there was a really uh, excellent senior graduate student or postdoc who did that work. Because I just can't envision the PIs of these gigantic labs taking that amount of time to mentor students and postdocs on, uh, on the to the depth of scholarship necessary to get one of these, uh, you know, truly, uh, truly scholarly papers out, um, because it 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 just it just takes way too much time, and these people are really really busy if they're pulling in two to two to five million dollars of extramural funding uh, per year. Now that's not all of them. Some of these people somehow manage to have 40 hours in a, in a day and I don't know how they do it, but I'm certainly not one of those people. Um, also, when you're considering established versus up and coming PIs, it's a lot more important to look at the derivative. So in which labs is the output of uh, innovation or depth of scholarship actually accelerating as opposed to just being quite good or, or, or above average all the time, which labs are really, uh, are really improving over time.
Okay, consideration two is the group culture. So ideally you want to be in a place where your happiness is as decoupled as possible from the day-to-day -day success of your project. So there will be months or maybe years at a time where literally nothing good happens, at least in your mind, although the failures are valuable, they can actually uh, really um, uh, damage your self-esteem and make you depressed, which happens to pretty much every graduate student at some point uh, in their studies. Uh, an example from my own PhD is that I started in 2005 and I didn't get my first paper until 2008. Um, there was a period of about two years where basically nothing was going right. Um, and, uh, you know, there are alternate universes where I, I would have quit the program and opened a restaurant or brew pub or something, which is what I kind of really wanted to do. Um, but I, I uh, you know, that just that type of decision just wasn't in the cards and it probably wouldn't have been that smart for me to do it anyway. Um, but after kind of that first uh, that first paper, it's sort of like how I imagine if you go to a casino and you win your first hand at poker and then the rest of the, the evening, you know, you feel better about it and you can you can be more uh, more relaxed um, going forward. Um, when you do your graduate uh, visitations, make sure to talk to as many graduate students as possible and ask yourself if they are uh, excited about what they're doing, if they're physically healthy, if they're mentally healthy, if they are happy with the amount of progress that they've been making, if it's a collaborative environment, if the group not only tolerates but values diversity of uh, sex and gender and race, religion, and perhaps um, sometimes overlooked if the group values um, personality, diversity and personality types, because we are all different, I think especially, uh, especially uh, researchers, uh, scientists, engineers, um, social scientists, uh, uh, humanity scholars are a very diverse uh, group and you want to make sure that the research team is actually, uh, is actually uh, uh, valuing of, of diversity. Remember that isolation is one of the surest routes to, de to depression and one of the surest bulwarks against depression is to be united by a common mission and that could be collaborative projects um, and a group dynamic that values working together or working toward common, uh, common goals. Consideration three is the PI herself or himself um, uh, and we're going to assume that most PIs are competent researchers, topic experts, and that they're doing something new and interesting. If they don't check all three of these boxes, uh, then look elsewhere. Um, uh, choose the PI that will allow you to flourish. That's kind of the bottom line. Uh, a lot of what I said about group culture also applies to the PI because the PI influences the culture by their hiring decision. Not necessarily the PI's uh, personality themselves, that's not necessarily what determines the group culture, but they determine the group culture by the hiring decisions they make. In fact, the PI's personality is often quite <laughs> different from kind of the, the uh, median or, 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 uh, or mean personality type in the, uh, in the research group. Um, importantly, find out if the people in the group have gotten the types of positions that you want. And what this is, is evidence that the PI will support you after, being, after leaving a lab um, and that they're invested in your success throughout your PhD and after. Um, you could just ask the PI if they're invested in your success, but obviously they're going to tell you yes. It's a lot easier, um, uh, or, well, it's a, it, not necessarily easier, but it's, it's a sure judge, uh, a way to judge this um, the level of support by actually researching where the the uh, the students have ended up and did they get the position that they wanted um, and are those positions similar to the positions that that you want in industry or academia or government or consulting um, or and, and so forth um, 
Importantly, also try to find out what the attrition rate is. So whether students have left the group under less than amicable circumstances. So that is, did they master out? Did they just quit entirely? Did they join a different lab? Did they leave, did they graduate with their PhD, but then, uh, then never had a relationship with their advisor again? These are potentially as important, almost like, uh, mortality and morbidity is kind of a, a proxy for uh, for uh, healthy behavior. Like, what's the what's the long term consequence of smoking? You know, what's the long term consequence of being in the in in this in this lab? You know, are you likely to stay there? Are you likely to finish uh, with a good impression and a good relationship with the uh, with the advisor? The PI will put their best foot forward in the visitation weekend, and so it's hard to judge uh, the future based on that one interaction, but at least you can get a sense of trust and openness of the advisor during that interaction. Okay. The final consideration is the school itself. So that's the institution, the location, the department, or the program within the department. And I'm not going to say that a degree from a, from a highly ranked school doesn't matter um, because in some uh, superficial sense it does. It's kind of a pre-vetting uh, that says you got into this highly ranked institution so someone has already done the hard work of judging you know, how good a student you are. Uh, whether that's, uh, that's true or not, maybe there's some validity to it, but there are some huge disadvantages to that, uh, to choosing a school based on that mindset. Um, you know, for, for example, there are some, uh, there are some high technology companies that place your institution in tiers where the, uh, the probability of being hired and the salary range once you get hired is actually dependent on the tier at which the school is placed. Um, and, and actually, this, this is like kind of the, the real politique of the, of the situation, but it's really a bad way to make the decision. Um, so the PIs at the top places um, are not usually regarded as the, as the most attentive mentors. So you get a lot of resources, you get, the, you get the premium of the fancy school on your diploma, but maybe your experience in that school uh, or in that, that lab might not be uh, as good as it could be somewhere where you had a more attentive mentor. Um, in fact, that's very likely to be the case. Um, note that the PI is far more important than the program or department or even institution um, in terms of your day-to-day -day level of happiness, which is going to influence your productivity which is going to influence the job that you eventually get. So the department and the program have an influence on your life kind of in the first year when you're taking classes and doing, you know, going to, uh, to seminars and so forth. But uh, it's really the lab that's going to influence your quality of life and your enthusiasm for, the pro for, the, for your program for the rest of your, uh, of your PhD. A final note is on uh, location. So is it a cold place? Is it a hot place? Is it a long distance from home? Is it an international uh, location? Um, do you speak the language at the place uh, where, if in the, do you speak the official language of the country that you're going to do your studies in? Uh, this is a really uh, personal decision. I have uh, almost nothing uh, useful to say about it because of how personal it is. Um, what I would say, though, is that most people committed enough to research um, will find that they often don't have a lot of uh, choices once, you know, they get, you know, because what are the odds that the program you want is in exactly the location that, that you want? Um, or when you finally get a job, what are the odds that it's going to be exactly where you want it to be? You know, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, considerations uh, on top of just the uh, just the program personality fit and so forth um, family age uh, the condition of your family um, young children and so forth so um, 
I hope I've said something useful. Uh, feel free to reach out and let me know uh, if you'd like me to expand on any of these points. All right, take care.